Recently, headlines of rising energy prices and potential blackouts have oversaturated our news feeds. But this crisis was a long time coming. You get it? Yeah, I got it. What we're experiencing now is a result of years of energy policy failure, a market dominated by expensive coal and gas, and an exploitative fossil fuel industry which steamrolls traditional owner consent and destroys country. Successive coalition governments, from Abbott to Morrison, handcuffed our energy grid to polluting fuels in a decade of energy policy shambles. This is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't be scared. Wait the treasurer you. knows the rule on crops. It's coal. They ignored the science, which showed they needed to quickly transition from fossil fuels to clean, affordable, renewable energy, and locked households into expensive coal and gas. But why? Money! In 2020 to 2021 alone, the fossil fuel industry gave 1.3 million to the coalition in political donations. In turn, the coalition gave billions in public subsidies back to these corporations to build new coal and gas power stations. It's the circle of fossil fuel and political life. The Russian war in Ukraine has also pushed fossil fuel prices extraordinarily high. Many countries have recently sanctioned and banned imports from Russia, a major exporter of gas and oil. Because our federal government failed to build new energy infrastructure, our energy grid relied on these expensive fossil fuels. Greedy coal and gas corporations choose to manufacture profit off crisis, whilst violating consent, water and climate. With prices on the global market so high, gas corporations have exported abroad nearly 80% of gas. These gas corporations have made us the biggest exporter of fossil fuels in the world. And therefore, the gas that we use for our electricity in Australia is directly linked to the sky high prices internationally. And it all reached the peak of ridiculous prices recently, when the managing body, Australian Energy Market Operator, had to step in and put a cap on prices. Fossil fuel corporations knew this would cost them money, so they intentionally withdrew the power so that when AEMO ordered their generators back, they could profit off of the need for us to power our lives. They put profit over people, leaving communities out in the dark. In the face of this, AEMO had to step in and suspend the market, deeming it impossible to operate. In doing so, they can now ensure generators are running and that we have a secure supply of energy so that the chances of blackouts and higher prices are much lower. AEMO will set the price of electricity at a level that is for everyone. But this is a band-aid on a much bigger issue. The current rules of our energy grid have allowed coal and gas corporations to profit in cruel ways. Our government still gives public money to these gas corporations so that they can frack sacred land while steamrolling traditional owners' consent, export all this gas abroad, and hold our need for power and electricity to ransom at the cost of families doing it most tough. It didn't have to be this way. This is not a supply problem. We do not need more coal and gas, but instead need to transition from expensive fossil fuels to new renewable energy infrastructure to power our lives with sun, wind and batteries. In some places, this solution is already in action and it's working. State and territory governments like the ACT have invested more in renewable energies. And guess what? They haven't experienced the same high prices and unstable power supplies like New South Wales and Victoria. And if we electrified every Australian home by removing gas and replacing it with solar and battery, the average household could be saving over five grand in 2030. A future powered by cheap, clean renewables is within reach, but it requires us to hold our government accountable to stop fossil fuels, equip communities with solar power and batteries, and protect water, country, and climate. If you didn't get the energy crisis, we hope you get it now.